Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today to review a movie called Woody Woodpecker. It's a brand new movie that got uh, released straight to DVD and it's on Netflix now. Now, before I really get started in the review and tell you about how I know about uh, how I grew up with the character, um, definitely stay to after the credits. I mean, well, or when you watch it on Netflix or whatever, I saw on Netflix. There's a classic cartoon called uh, about Niagara Falls. And going over in the barrel, then Woody Woodpecker keeps trying to go over in the barrel. And, uh, and he's having a problem with the, um, one of the people there, one of the park officials there. And that's kind of a retro to the classic uh, Woody Woodpecker cartoons. Well, anyways, uh, go back, fast forward. I grew up with Woody Woodpecker because back when I was growing up, especially in the 70s, 80s, like... They had lots of uh, cartoons on. It wasn't like, you know, because they got rid of Saturday morning cartoons, which I think is awful for kids nowadays, you know. Because they just have Cartoon Network now. They think that's good enough, I guess. Because uh, we had um, we had Cartoon Network. We, we didn't have Cartoon Network, but we have car Saturday morning cartoons. And then in the afternoons come off school, you know, the different stations would play different cartoons. You know, uh, our NBC affiliate would play Woody Woodpecker. And then they'd play the Jetsons. And I know, or that, yeah, they played Jetsons. And then the Jetsons actually had like a bunch of new episodes. that came out in the 80s. I remember those one where they were on a game show and Elroy said, go ahead and make my day. Because that's the clip there. That's the quote everybody was saying from Sudden Impact. I remember my dad, Harry and I, was like shaking his head. And he had the real Ghostbusters on there, which was a great show. You know, and our ABC affiliate would play, like, the old Tom and Jerry cartoons and, uh, and, like, the old, uh, real old Looney Tunes, including the old black and white Porky Pig ones, which are the best. They're really funny because they're super silly. CBS would play a ton of stuff. They'd have, like, reruns of Transformers. I mean, they'd show Transformers, He-Man, G.I. Joe, and they had the Muppet Show, Flintstones, and, uh, Scooby-Doo sometimes, too. And, you know, and they had all this stuff right after you got off school. And sometimes in the morning, I know CBS had a lot of stuff in the morning. And they even got fined for, uh, during kids' programs for having too many, uh, kids' toy commercials. They got fined by FCC back in the 80s. I remember that. My dad was telling me about that. And, um, with Woody Woodpecker, a lot of the major studios had, like, their own a line of cartoons to play before movies and stuff, especially back in the days of the Bijou. Like, of course, Walt Disney, that's the one really started, and they had, like, the Mickey Mickey Mouse cartoons, and the, they had the short subjects along with the feature-length movies. You know, MGM had Tom and Jerry and Droopy Dog and stuff like that. Uh, Warner Brothers, of course, had Looney Tunes, and, like, Universal had Woody Woodpecker. Paramount had, like, the Harvey Tunes. No, Novel Tunes. Well, the Harvey Tunes or Novel Tunes, I can't remember. And they had, like, Popeye and stuff like that, which was really cool. Well, anyways, fast forward in the time. I grew up with Woody Woodpecker, so I pretty much know the, the stock commercials. And they had, like, uh, cartoons, and they had, like, uh, Chili Willie and stuff like that. The only ever time I've ever seen, Woody, uh, like, the Walter Lance Woody Woodpecker cartoons was in... Uh, Oh, cool. They had, uh, see, sometimes you get, like, if someone makes a comment, you can see it right at the bottom. You know, even if you're using a webcam or whatever like that. Um, I lost track of what I was going to say. You know, the only time i see seen Waterlands, they had one, I think it was the Berry family. They had a Bear family, and there was a whole bunch of cartoons. This was way back in the early 70s, well, late 70s, like 77, 78, or something like that. The West Street Plaza they were having for the love of Benji. I saw it with my mom and my sister. And I was in second grade at the time. And uh, they went to use the rent or something. I don't know what they went to do. I was sitting in the theater. And they had like three cartoons. And then they showed the movie. And I said, man, you missed all those great cartoons. What cartoons? They played like three cartoons before the movie started. And then the only time I saw That was a, a Walter Lance cartoon. The only time I saw an official Woody Woodpecker cartoon in the theater was... Right before Problem Child 2, when I was in 14th Street, Maryland, way back in 1991. Oh, okay. Now, fast forward to 
Woody Woodpecker, the new movie. It's a live action movie with Woody Woodpecker as a, as a computer generated uh, animation, you know, against all the people and stuff like that. And apparently he lives in the woods and he was trying to, uh, there's two poachers that are trying to capture him because he's a rare bird and he, like, his, uh, like, if he stuff and stuff, like, he can sell for, like, a uh, half a million dollars. And, uh, Poacher was trying to get him, and, of course, he made them look like fools. And there was, like, this, uh, guy that gets fired, and he wants to go into, uh, the wilderness and, to, and make a mansion and stuff like that. And his thing is, since he got fired, he wanted to go into the business of flipping houses. He spent all his money to make this mount mansion in this wooded location, which is a prime location. And uh, flip it. And then apparently that's Woody Woodpecker's home. He lives real close by. And it's him. This one girl that's like a cardboard cutout of uh, Sofia Vergara and uh, maybe a little Ivanka Trump thrown in there. And then uh, his ex-wife comes over and he wants him to watch his kid. And who's like a, I don't know, 14-year-old boy. Who's kind of like... Um, disassociated he's like he's always like on his um his uh smartphone and listen to headphones and stuff like music and stuff and he's really not too engaged with his dad and him and his dad kind of like had a don't really connect that much well anyway they go into the forest and they try to kill and then woody woodpecker uh comes out and he he sees that they're destroying the forest and then he gets and then he starts sabotaging the whole project and, um, including stuff that's actually really, uh, dangerous. I don't know why they went with live action, because there's a part where this guy would work on electric, and then he sets the electrocutes the guy. And then, of course, there's a PG Ray movie. They showed, like, um, uh, his body going black and showing, like, the skeleton, black skeletons. And he said, yeah, hey, it's just like in the cartoon, or there's a part where that girl's cooking on, um, uh, the stove inside the RV, a gas stove. He blows out the lights. Unless the gas built up and then it blows up with her in it. And she comes out and she gets all mad. She leaves. Uh, she doesn't die. But I mean, it's filled with stuff like that. I don't know why they went with live action. Because in a cartoon you get away. The live action looks like they're going to kill somebody. He does all this stuff like this. And a lot of times the people that are the construction were just doing their jobs. They're not really bothered. They're just, and then he gets mad because... Apparently, they it changes whenever the guy said, well, start being nice to the thing. And then he starts feeding him. And then he said, oh, okay, I'll let you build whatever you want. So it wasn't really about the environment. It was about him getting food. Um, It's really a terrible, terrible movie. I don't know why they want... What they should have... It has none of the charm of the original Woody Woodpecker I grew up with. I mean, he just seems like a real jerk for the most part. I mean, he's... He has his moments and stuff like that. There's a part where this kid goes into town. He gets this guitar from the thrift shop. And then the girl says, well, I'll tell you what. I'll lend you the guitar if you play in our band and stuff like that. And they do a couple songs. They do Bird of the Word and a couple other things. They're really, it's really lame. But, I mean, these bullies uh, see the kid. And when he comes out, they say, oh, this is your, our guitar now. And they take it. And then Woody Woodpecker attacks him. And he pecks all their clothes off. It's like he goes... Spins around like that and all the clothes are gone or something. Except for underwear and stuff. Um, would you, uh, okay, because usually a lot of times you see the bullying it takes a long time for it to get resolved, but this time it gets resolved right away. Um, I will say the actors emote and show emotion and stuff like that. They're not, it's not that great. I mean, uh, the character of that Sofia Vergara thing is just like, you know, just one dimensional and stuff like that, but. At least, unlike the Cloverfield, uh, the new Cloverfield movie, these actors actually show some emotion and stuff like that. So I, I give it that. But it's really a terrible movie. I don't. They sh what they should have done was they should have went for a retro-looking cartoon anime film. You can get away with so much in an anime film and make it a little bit smart and make it funny. This isn't funny at all. It's bad. Captain Underpants. Was really funny, and it had a, this one had a lot of bathroom humor, but it's done very lame, with him like, uh, you know, the bird droppings or like they had a farting. Even the farting scene wasn't funny. At least in Captain Underpin, it was it was funny, but it was embracing itself in its own silliness. 
This one is just, he's just annoying. He's just a jerk. He keeps people up all night for not just because they wouldn't give him any food. And then when they did it, uh, he tries to be nicey nice, but he still screws up some. And uh, I don't want to give away much more. It's, it's, it's not a good movie at all. I mean, they did something like this with uh, a classic cartoon, another classic cartoon I grew up with, Rocky and Bullwinkle. And Ryan, they had, this was the one with Piper Parabol, because they did one called Boris and Natasha, a complete live at, which was awful. I saw it and said that was terrible. But this one, the Bullwinkle I saw back about 10 years ago with, like, it had uh, Jace Alexander, Rob De Niro was in it and stuff like that. And was it Sally? I can't remember who played Natasha in this one. Um... That one was really good. I really liked that. I thought it was smart and funny and clever. They uh, they could have done. They had no. The, there no way this was funny or clever at all. And this one they should have just went with a classic nostalgic looking cartoon because if you watch, you watch the movie at the very end they show a cartoon, and the cartoon's the best thing in the movie. That's a million times better than the movie. And what they should have done was show the cartoon at the beginning because that's kind of stupid. A lot of people walk out of the theater. You know, when the credits come on, it's just, I mean, you know, whenever I go to the theater, I stay till the ending credits are over. And I even fast forward to some people have to see the credits, they'll, they'll, they'll say it's such a sucky movie, they'll shut it right off. They don't know that there's a cartoon at the very end. They should have put the cartoon at the beginning, that's what they usually do in these movies. Don't put it at the end, that's stupid. And basically the movie is really stupid, it, it's awful. Um, it's really terrible. Right along the lines of... Uh, Cloverfield, except the acting was better. Where Cloverfield, the effects were cool, but got silly. And this one, the effects are all right, but the acting's okay, but it's just awful. And they're, they're both awful. So I guess it's another 2 out of 10. I, I can't recommend it at all. The best thing is just, if you want to watch it, like fast forward to like the credits, and then watch the cartoon at the end of the movie, that's the best part of the movie. And I don't know why they put the end of the movie. They usually traditionally put them at the beginning of the movie. That's what. That's the whole point. That was very stupid on their part. I think they did that because they knew that the cartoon would blow the rest of the movie away. They said, this is what Woody Wood, this Woody Woodpecker's nothing like this. Woody Woodpecker's kind of a jerk. And I'm keeping it a little clean. It was a kid's movie review, you know. But it's it's terrible. And he did like he did like a lot of mean things because he became a friend with a kid. He gave him some food. And then, like, you know, he went to the table, and he wants the food, and the kid, and the, and the father's like, hey, don't don't give me any food. And he shoots him away, and then it, he comes and pecks on his head, Woody Woodpecker. I mean, just because he shoots I would have done the same thing. He automatically attacks me. I'd hate that thing, you know. The original Woody Woodpecker cartoons are much better than this. I mean, you know, they're not, the old Woody Woodpecker aren't that funny either, but they're a million times better than this. I don't think Walter Lance would approve on this movie at all. It's really terrible. So, a 2 out of 10 for the new Woody Woodpecker movie. If you see it, just, well, if you see it, see it. But, I mean, the best part, right after the credits, they have original cartoon of the Niagara Falls. So, or they could have done something like, they do like an old school, uh, nostalgic looking cartoon and put like uh, Chili, Chili Willie and some of the other characters from Walter Lance. That'd be really neat. If they were done something, but anything is better than this. This movie's awful. So until next time, bye, please. Take care of my legion.